Snowy is one of the interesting characters with Tintin because he is a dog that is very intelligent and he can't communicate with Tintin. I mean, he, you know, he, t he can bark, but Tintin doesn't understand, you know, exactly what he's saying. They, they, but it does appear that Snowy can understand the language that people are talking. I mean, Snowy does seem to be on the surface of, of it very bright and intelligent. And he's a great character because he is, he's a dog, but he does a lot more than just, you know, trot round after Tintin, you know, by his ankles. He he gets involved in the plots. He sometimes has a significant role to play in scenes. You know, there's there, there's moments in the film where something that Snowy does is absolutely the catalyst for the film, the plot going ahead. He's a boy reporter, but there, as a reporter, it takes him. He stumbles essentially into these situations where. He, he finds himself involved in these various adventures, not things that he's necessarily looking for, adventures that he feels that he needs to be a part of. He just finds himself always caught up in something that he can't necessarily get out of. I think the characters of Thompson and Thompson definitely evoke that kind of silly, humor and and it's a trademark of what Hergé was doing with Tintin and the way in which his characters have this lovable side to them they can't help themselves it contributes to the fun you have again stumbling into these adventures Andy truly is extraordinary in his his deep understanding of first of all figuring out like a character like Haddock. Who is Haddock? He's got these blustering lines. He's got his delivery. He's a merchant seaman. He, he, um, he has to express himself physically almost more than vocally. And I think Andy's uniquely suited to figuring out just exactly how that's going to read when somebody has to take all those characteristics and try to find the character. The same storytelling that existed within the comic books comes through in the movie, and I think it's, a, it's an action-adventure story. It's a story for everybody, and it doesn't matter if you're 7 or 77, and I think that that's the beauty of what Hergé did with the level of humor in the storytelling, and I think, again, it translates into the movie that you know a 7-year-old can be laughing just as hard as a 77-year-old. Um, it's, it's so much physical comedy, as well as the jokes and the characters that you love. Steven Spielberg, whose work obviously needs no explanation or introduction, directing this movie. Uh, Peter Jackson, also whose work needs no introduction, um, producing, both being very collaborative, both, I think, helping each other out in both respects and putting all their talents into every aspect of the production. And, you know, that's a reflection on how important this character is and these stories are you know Tintin is so iconic and so kind of historically important to so many people that it's almost as if it can only be done by a combination of talents like this it's a straight down the line passionate uh, heartfelt attempt to really do justice to what made Tintin exciting and brilliant and what has made Tintin so famous for so many years. Captain Haddock is a sort of a, a surrogate father in a way, but an extremely unreliable one. And so it sort of fits into that dramatic model of the son knowing more than the dad, you know, and sort of Tintin is kind of like usually, you know, um, a lot more, a lot smarter and a lot more responsible than the, the, the adult in the team. It was probably one of the most fun times I've ever had writing because it was like being the star of our own Tintin radio play is that we always be talking like this all the time. So, um, uh, yeah, I think sort of part, part of me wanted to play Tintin. I, I was never, I never got the call. Never got the call. I was fortunate to witness Stephen and Peter working together, which uh, I'd known Peter longer and I'd only just met Stephen, um, but it was a real pleasure to see them, um, you know, vibing off each other and being incredibly respectful of each other, but also kind of seeing them in the best way, like, the, the, I mean, they both kind of um, would readily admit to being kind of like 
you know, big kids. And, you know, there's that famous Orson Welles quote about, like, film is the best kind of train set a boy could have. And uh, it was fun to see Stephen and Peter playing with the train set. My first experience of Tintin was like any other kids. I just found the book. I found the book in a mate's house. Uh, I started reading and thinking, this is solid adventure. This is pure adventure. Now, you know, you get straight into the action in every story. So that way, just uh, like every other kid, um, I, I happened across it, I found it, and, you, and then you've, you found pure gold. It's hard now to, to look at Hergé's style and, and not, if you look at it from the wrong end of history, think that it's just like all the movies. The truth is, no, the movies are like him. Uh, he sort of invents the action movie um, on, on paper. He sort of he storyboards movies of the future. He's fiercely dedicated. Um, uh, he's not remotely cynical, and that's a really important part of that character. There's nothing cynical about him at all. He's uh, not innocent because he's quite smart, but um, he has a, a completely uncynical view of the world. Uh, so you get drawn into his adventures and his sort of golly gosh um, attitude to everything that, you know, that evil must be fought and wrongs must be righted and that's just a given and it's that, again, that's just, it's so exciting to be part of that. Thompson and Thompson, who are not twins, um, is one of the strangest ideas uh, in, all of, in, in all of fiction, I think. That the fact that they've got the same name almost, there's a P in one of them, uh, that they, they have, there's no distinction between them as characters. They look and behave exactly the same way. And they are a bit of, um, there's a sort of a, a silent movie uh, a comedian quality to them. They just bring that um, onto the, the page so perfectly with you. They fall over again. They're so distinct, such pure caricature. I think Tintin is one of those things that's everything at once. You know, it's all genres in your face at the same time. Uh, so you, you've got a bit of, of noir, you've got a bit of Hitchcock, you've got a bit of uh, Biggles, you've got, you, you got everything at once, a bit of James Bond. It, it feels like uh, everything at once. And it come, and what's going to be surprising, I think, uh, for, a, for a new audience is it's effortlessly an action movie. It's effortlessly an action movie because it feels like it's the proto-action movie, and it kind of is.